The following are three more strange stories about time slips or glitches in the Matrix. Doug Miller. At 7 p.m. in the evening, Doug Miller and his wife were walking their three husky dogs on the beach. It was around mid-December, and as they were walking, they met a family from Ohio near the middle of the beach access, which was about 300 feet from beach to street. The mother and daughter continued walking past them to the beach, but the father and son stopped to play with the dogs and had a short conversation that lasted about five minutes. The father said that they used to own a husky and continued to play with the dogs as they talked. The father was wearing a yellow sweater and the son was wearing a black cloth face mask. The father then received a phone call from his wife telling them to join them on the beach and so they quickly ended the conversation and the father and son rejoined his wife and daughter on the beach. Doug and his wife then walked toward the main street. The entire south side of this beach access is faced by a tall construction fence that runs from the swash tunnel that was filled with water to the street and there was no access. At the end of the swash channel is a coffer dam out into the ocean. It looked as if they were building a new fishing pier, restaurant and a parking area so everything was blocked off. There was also a restaurant along the north side of the beach access. When they reached the street, they turned south in front of the construction fence which runs along the sidewalk and walked to the next building, which was about 50 feet south of the beach access. They then waited for two cars to pass and crossed the street to walk down an alley next to a barbecue restaurant. They then stopped at the barbecue restaurant patio to ask the hostess if dogs were allowed on the patio. And while they were talking to the hostess, they saw the family from the beach access come out of the restaurant with their food and sit at a table on the patio, dressed in the same yellow sweatshirt and same black face mask. It was definitely the same family of four. Doug and his wife just looked at each other with confused expressions because they realised that there was no possible way for the family to have made it from where they'd passed them on the beach access to the restaurant in the time they did and without passing them. That access and the sidewalk is just a few feet wide and was not possible and they certainly would not have had time to get their meals. No way. Dr. G. E. Moon In 1935, a Scottish physician by the name of Dr. E. G. Moon had a practice in Broadstairs, East Kent, UK. At the time of the incident, he was at nearby Minster in Thanet visiting his patient, Lord Carson, who lived at Cleve Court. After talking to Lord Carson, the doctor left his patient and made his way downstairs into the hallway. As he was standing in the hallway, his mind was preoccupied about the instructions he had given the nurse about the prescription he had left for Lord Carson. When he was standing at the front door, he hesitated for a moment, wondering whether he should go back upstairs and have another word with the nurse, but then changed his mind and walked out the front door. As he stepped out of the house, he was shocked to see that his car was no longer in the driveway. He remembered parking it next to a thick yew hedge, but the hedge was also missing. It was at this point that he looked around and found that the entire surroundings had changed and the driveway itself was now just a muddy track and then spotted a man walking towards him. The man approaching him was dressed in unusual apparel. That was an old-fashioned coat with several capes around the shoulders and a top hat. His clothing appeared more suited to someone from the 19th century. As the man was walking, he was smacking a whip against his riding boots and slung over his shoulder was a long barreled gun. As the man drew closer, he stopped for a second and stared hard at Dr. Moon. Even though Dr. Moon had suddenly found himself in a changed environment without his car, along with a strangely dressed man coming towards him, he was not in the slightest bit alarmed or perturbed. But concern over Lord Carson's prescription was still on his mind. It was as if his mind was suddenly in two places at once. Dr. Moon then turned around and proceeded to walk back inside the house. But before entering, he decided to take another quick glance at the changed scenery behind him and found that his car was back in the driveway alongside the yew hedge and the muddy track was now a paved driveway. The strange man had also disappeared probably back to the 19th century where he belonged. It was at this stage that the reality of his situation finally kicked in and he realised that something very odd had just happened to him and all in a matter of seconds. And why did he not talk to the man in the old-fashioned clothing? Dr Moon seemed to have been drawn into some sort of hallucinatory state. He later discussed his ordeal with Lady Carson but asked her that no word of it come out for fear of losing his professional credibility. He 
It appears that Dr. Moon had been caught up in a time slip. It was only after his death that the story was revealed. Naomi Fuller. The following story could come under a time slip, or a simple possession, or even reincarnation. It happened in the Swan Hotel in the town of Tunbridge Wells in Kent in South East England in the mid-19th century. Nancy Fuller and her young daughter Naomi were on their very first visit to the town and booked a room at the top of the hotel. As the mother and daughter were ascending the stairs, Naomi's behaviour started to change, where she appeared to get agitated and then closed her eyes and started whispering to herself. Her concerned mother asked Naomi what was wrong and she replied that she recognised the stairway and had been there before. She then came out with the startling remark that a lover was waiting for her in the room, as he said he always would. As they entered the room, the young girl went straight to the corner and called out the name John. It was as if someone was in the corner waiting for her. What happened next would astonish her mother when her daughter's eyes appeared to change in front of her and she appeared to grow older and her clothing took on an appearance as from an earlier period. After they left the hotel, Naomi was able to tell her mother what had happened where she claimed that she had previously lived in this building when it was a privately owned house which would have been before 1835 when it was first named The Swan. When Naomi had lived there, it was called High House, and in that life, she had had an affair with a man called John. Unfortunately, her father disapproved of the affair and had the young man taken away, and the young woman was locked up in the room. Knowing that she would never see John again, she jumped out of the window and fell to her death. The Swan Hotel still exists today, and the room is now number 16, where it is claimed to be haunted. People have complained of bed covers being lifted off of the bed, chairs being moved, and someone tapping on the window. Could this be just a haunting where a young woman committed suicide, and have other young women been affected as they climbed up the stairs? Would Naomi have the gift of mediumship, but was unaware of her powers?